Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new 65% um, from a company that is based out of Sweden. Um, I have not seen any of their keyboards before, but I came across uh, their listing. I can't recall how, but I reached out to them. Uh, we had a couple of back and forth emails and then they were like, would you like to take a look at the K5? And I was like, yeah. So they sent this over to me from extra extra fi. I did I mean we communicated by email, so I'm not sure if this is extra fee or extra fi. Um extra fi? Extra fi? I don't know. I'm gonna stick with extra fi for now. So this is the K5 RGB con compact. Now this is a um I believe this is a wired only. Uh, I need to pay more attention to that. No, yeah, it's wired only. It's not a three mode. Now, their website allows the end user, uh, the customer, uh, to modify a lot of the different, you know, components. It's for a customizer. It's one of the better ones out there. Uh, I've seen better, but I've seen much, much worse. Um, they have two bases. They have a black, and they have like a white, frosted, see-through, semi-opaque. Um, and then you can choose key camps. They have a pretty good selection. Kale, TTC, Taxi, uh, Gatoron, and also Temu, um, surprisingly enough. Uh, and some uh, cherries, Cherry uh, Silence as well. And then they have they have the black shine through. They have a white shine through key cap set. And they also have some different colored ones shine through. That also includes the, uh, the sub-legends um, on there. So... It, it, it's not bad, so I did like that. But let's go ahead and take a look at the keyboard and see what we've got. Setting the keyboard aside for a moment, let's just see what we've got in the box. Uh, looks like we've got a uh, little quick little guide on hot swap and switches. This does have a, um, a shroud. I think it's clip on, not a magnetic, so that you can get the floating key style or the, the standard sunken in. And a quick uh, show of which side to use for the keycap and the key switch. Boost your RGB lighting. All right, so they're saying that you're uh, you can get brighter RGB uh, going over USB 3, which we will be doing by hit and function USB 2 3. Now, shouldn't that show me what key it actually is? Oh, I guess it shows. That might mean control. That's weird. That should. If it's programmable, that should not show that unless that can't be programmed. I don't know. All right, so we've got this. We've got a, uh, a manual or a quick start guide. All right, also just a quick guide to the keyboard shortcuts on here. And uh, a picture of a USB cable going into a USB port. We also have your standard wire key cap key switch puller with our logo on it. A decent uh, USB-A to USB-C nylon cable. The magnet. It, this is actually a nice cable. I like it. Uh, nice, uh, strong port end, so you won't have to worry about it breaking. All right, a couple extra switches. Good call. I really uh, prefer when manufacturers, especially uh, with pre-built keyboards, obviously, that they include a couple extra switches. Things can always go wrong in a hot swap. And that's right, this has a magnetic badge, so we got, oh, I forgot what this stands for. I know this is more of a gamer keyboard, so I'm not exactly sure what that stands for, but yeah, let's we'll check that out. All right, so here we are, uh, the extra fee, extra fee, extra fee, I don't know, I forgot which one I agreed on, extra fee. Um, this is the extra fee K5 RGB. Yeah, there's that badge, but... All right, I like badges. I like being able to customize badges, but shouldn't that sit in like a recessed, like little spot so that it couldn't just go on there sideways? Huh. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take that off because I know I'll lose it. I wanted to see real quick about this shroud. So it is clip on and there's no, that magnet is for the badge Got a couple of LED cutout, so there we can see the profile with the floating key design. So uh, 
Obviously, you can tell this is a uh, regular tray mount. And there's the USB port. It's not recessed much at all, so it should work with pretty much any cable. And on the back, we have, oh, it's a nice uh, textured carbon fiber-like bottom with only one pair of feet. Oh, it's hard to come out. Um, and the feet have rubber pads as well as the default standing, so you won't have to worry about it scooting around. All right, so let's take a look under the hood. We have kale reds. All right. So, whoa, yeah, I know these are stock. I hope that ping is coming across. Um, because we are dealing with what I assume is a steel plate. Yep. So this is a steel plate. Uh, I don't know. The, the, the keyboard starts at $129 with, I believe, these switches, um, the basic kales. And since it is a steel plate, using kales in here, I mean, using any switch that isn't uh, lubricated that has ping, all it's going to do is the plate acts as a. Um, as a speaker almost for the reverberation that uh, the switch can cause so and it can actually cause other switches in the keyboard to uh, just I mean a tiny amount but they'll make noise and it's just that's, all I can hear is the pain uh, all right well we do have five pin compatibility we have north-facing LEDs. Yeah, I didn't... Um... Actually, no. I... She asked me which one I wanted, and I picked black, and I think I... I want to say I picked some Gatoron switches, and I wanted to check out the other uh, keycap set, and she's like, I can only do black or white. I'm like, okay, black. Um, but it would have been nice to here out of the box with some uh, lubed switches. I actually <laughs> used my last set of lubed switches. I have switches waiting to be lubed, but I haven't had the time to get to them yet. So it, it will probably have to wait for another video for me to come back to it, and I'll, I'll probably want to mod it. Um, because, I mean, trying to filter out the pen, or the, the ping, just, uh, feels a little flat to me. It feels a little flat. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see when, when the sound test comes up. Now, what about these stabilizers? All right, so. Oh, well, that's that's new. Um, not the uh, messy <laughs> uh, lube job, but the fact that those are screw-in stabilizers. Now, that is interesting, I've got to say. So, it just again begs begs the question: if they they went so far as to have screw and stabilizers, why didn't they just go with a different plate material? Um, especially if they're going to offer it with a uh, you know unlubed switches. I I don't know. Now this it, it is literally just soaked in uh, in grease. I'm honestly surprised that it's not sticking. Let's see. That's odd. The entry keys legend is K5. The, name, the model of the keyboard. It's just odd. I find it odd anyway. Yeah, they, um,. Looks like they used a gram of grease on each side of the stabilizer. I am just, I mean, it's all over the plate. That is way too much grease. Uh, that is definitely gonna cause issues. I'm definitely gonna have to clean that up when I come back. But we are doing it stock today, so 
Just leave it at that. Yeah, I can hear a little bit of a mush. Yeah, look at how much good was. <clears throat> wow. Oh, there's an LED on either side of the uh, the switch. I don't have an, I don't think I've seen that before either. But I was going to say I haven't seen uh, that I can recall on a floating key design. I don't think I've seen screw and stabilizers. So it's a new one for me. Although the plate actually, the plate actually appears to have the cutouts for um, plate mounted stabilizers. Oddly enough, hmm. well, I'm honestly surprised that it's not that the stabilizers aren't mushier. There's a bit of mush there, but these uh, stabilizers are highly, highly. Oh, they just over applied it by way too much. They just bathed it in there. So, all right. See, I've already I've got grease on my hands just from uh, uh, checking out the stabilizers. So, you can see these keycaps, which are not ABS, they are thick. ABS. I just found that funny. It said material of keycaps, thick ABS. You know, you get it down or thick down. Get your thick ABS keycaps. I just thought that was funny. All right, I got a lot of the grease off of there. So other than that, I mean, that's these are reds, and with the ping, it almost sounds like they're clicky. I don't know if you guys hear that. So, and the shroud, the shroud is that. Uh, whoa, <laughs> that is quite flimsy. Do not put in a spot where it could get stepped on. That will easily be damaged. Uh, wow, that's oh, it's about the flimsiest frame I've seen on detachable boards before. Yeah, I don't have one in here, but I have a few because I like this design. But this is. I mean, if I put any more pressure, that's just gonna break. That's, that's, uh, I don't know. That's kind of silly. <clears throat> well, the keyboard itself kind of, it does a bit of a, um, it has a bit of flex. I don't feel like I'm gonna break it or anything, but it does have a bit of flex. Now, all right, they said thick ABS. What thickness do we have? One point two millimeters. Uh, that's not that thick. So, uh, one point two millimeters ABS keycaps and. One thing that I gotta say is is bothering me. A lot of these uh, commands, like function F1, it's not saying function one. You're supposed to show the legend of the key that it's supposed to be, not the sublegends. And it's littered throughout this, and uh, I don't know why they decided to do that because. Now, I know they're more geared towards gamers, but it is a mechanical keyboard. I, I like the layout. I, I, I kind of like the shroud. I mean, I wish it was a little bit more rigid, but there's, I mean, I, I don't usually keep keycaps. I mean, now, if these were 1.5 and they were nicer, that'd be a different story. But these are your, these aren't even... I'm not. I want to sit here and just like dig on these, but the legends they they don't really match. These sub legends are barely visible. You've got the uh, uh, the super legends or the you know the, the the shift symbols right next to, and they're tiny. Um, the font is very uninspiring. 
uh, the, the it's like they can't make up their mind are we going to use symbols or are we going to use text it's it, alt gr it, it, a lot of these things it just this keycap set is for me not something i would enjoy using i would want to replace the keycaps well what happens when i want to oh how is it that i do that all right i gotta do function and the uh what's that a 2.25 key which one could it be which one oh nope led on and off it is oh because it says led on and off so they want me to go by not the sub legends but the front legends of the key and um i really i don't know i just i don't get it also i guess you can switch alt with function yeah, none of the uh, keys that are already mapped can be remapped. So, and there is no software. I mean, uh, I'm just... I'm a little confused. I mean, I just... Uh, Alright, so page up and home. Page down and then delete and turn on and off on KRO. Who wants to turn off NKRO? And why does it have to be delete? Where's insert? Oh, there's insert. All right, so I'm going to have to remember, because I can't remap it, that function lock bracket is insert. That's... I shouldn't have to remember. I should be able to program it. Now, it doesn't have software, and the keyboard allows you to do um, changing of the RGB as well as adding macros, but that's it. There's no more programming than that. And I just, it's difficult for me to comprehend the business decision of a company that, you know, is intent on selling keyboards that are gonna sell. I mean, obviously they may want to target a specific market, but I mean, everything is business. So how do they say, hey, Let's build this keyboard, this, that. All right, do our research. Because that's part of product development is doing the research on the competition to try to find what is out there so that you at least meet um, the same feature sets and you know, pricing, as well as what features are users looking for. So being that 99% of mechanical keyboards out there do have software, where does the business decision come in to say, you know what? Let's not put software on this. Why? There's that 1% of keyboards that don't have it. We'll, we'll just join the ranks of them. I, I, I don't... I can't comprehend it. But... Uh, I don't know. That's just, uh, that's just me. Because it basically... It, it makes it an unusable keyboard for me. Because what, what's going to happen is... I'm gonna, if I want to use it... Obviously, I'm going to change the switches. I'm going to change the keycaps. I might for the first day or two remember you know particular shortcuts but when i'm working and i've got i mean a lot of what i do is coding or server management or fixing things that have gone haywire we don't know what's going on is it the database is it the network is it the cache cdn what is it i have to go in there and figure it out and i don't have the time to keep the menu up in my head basically the, the the shortcut keys to remember where are the keys that i'm going to need insert is a key i use a lot i primarily do a lot of work when i'm doing server admin um well anytime actually even just uh, trying to figure out you know why a particular container is down or servers down, whatever i use the command line and i use linux and i, I like to use midnight commander a lot and insert is a big function in there as well as other programs anyway but it shouldn't just oh okay it doesn't make it just for me no it should be for everybody so that they can be working with a standard now there is no standard it's not like keyboard keyboard companies get together and say all right let's all agree that you know we're going to map insert to the left bracket no because they'd be like no insert because the majority of keys even if they can't be programmed they have the the insert at the next layer below the delete it's just it makes sense especially when you do home page up page down end right those match up but if you look at a tkl what's the two other keys insert and delete so why aren't they there 
that's what this is supposed to replace. Those two, the, those, the, the cluster of two rows that's on a TKL, also on full size. So I'm not going to remember that. So I can't, I would end up taking this off of my desk before the end of the day, especially if I had a hectic day. If I, you know, checked in and there was seven tickets waiting for me and all of them were high priority, this keyboard wouldn't last 15 minutes because I'd just be like, no. Yeah. So, and I gotta believe that gamers, I mean, while macros I know are extremely important for gamers, I'm sure they, they are used to particular, you know, setups for different games and they like them. Well, for this game, I want to change over to this map. Well, you know, they don't even have, offer profiles. So, I, um, I don't know. Anyway. The shroud is kind of hard to take off, but again, this is flimsy. Uh, if you like it, keep it on, because if not, I'm afraid this would break way too easy. Let's see what this RGB is all about. Plug this in. Make sure we don't lose the camera. All right, we're good. Oh, okay. Now let me see. Oh, it was already in USB 3 mode, I guess. Because there it is in 2. It blinked and now, yeah, it's, this kind of tells me. All right, so it's pretty bright uh, comparatively. Let's see about these commands here. RGB LED. All right, so function LED on and off, which is caps lock. So that should say function caps lock. So you're supposed to be able to hit one of these. Oh, that's not it. Ah. Uh, how do you reset it? Now oh, there it is. Back to the reset. Backspace. Right. Let's start over. I have a whole dedicated key for the, for the calculator. Thanks. Appreciate that. That's real useful. Now change background. Okay, let's do it all, all single color. Change background. So function BG color. And that's the palette. Apparently you can press space bar for other colors that just went to rainbow that's just not bg color let me pick orange I make it to where it's all keyboard programmable all right make it to where it doesn't work all right <laughs> i just i don't know all right so change individual key color Press FN K color when the FA key is blinking. Press the keys you would like to change the color of. All right. All right. What if I want to change the color of function? <laughs> so I'm supposed to hit function when I'm done. All right. And now here's the. Uh, so that should make the alphas the color I pick orange. I was just doing a wave effect and I just can switch between wave effects. Oh, hey, it's in there. I guess I had to cycle through it. Well, that's kind of, all right, so. What if I do, I want to do the rest of the keys a different color. So it's function, K color. I'm going to do I guess the number keys are alpha, but I'm just playing around here. And let's make them a bright blue. Alright, almost worked. I mean, no lights there. These two don't get any color. Oh, 
light is just off. So these two keys, for whatever reason, only Technology is meant to ease our workflow, make us more productive, make mean you know tasks that can be repetitive quicker and easier. Um, technology is supposed to aid us in performing to our max. If I have to sit and wrestle with my keyboard just to get it to work, and even the instructions don't make it clear that you have to cycle through. Well, a number of things. I, I, I don't know. It's just, I've worked on large software products. Things that were going out to the masses worldwide. The amount of testing that we did sometimes took up a quarter of the time that the entire development took of a product because you have to go through, you know, basic use cases, edge use cases, test models. I mean, there's so much that has to be done to make sure that the product is ready, you know, because, I mean, especially desktop software, because once you ship it, it's out there. It's another thing with web-based software, even apps, because you can, you know, update them pretty easily. But, I mean, especially if we were going international, we had companies that we worked with that we'd hire, you know, go through the software, tell us any issues, you know, that you might find. Um, there was times that there was cultural issues, Functional issues, logical issues, I mean, all sorts of different issues can come up that you would never have even imagined when you were sitting there, you know, architecting this software product. When it comes to hardware, which I I never was like higher team lead, but I was part of a few hardware products. I, I mean, the amount of testing that was done, they brought in people um, and also licensed outside firms, you know, to have you know, the, the target market people come in and use their product and, you know, give an honest review. So, it just doesn't seem like this is happening here because, I don't know. I mean, I've come across other keyboards. Klim, they're also European. Klim has the Klim Shift, 65%. I love it. It's a great keyboard. They also design their keyboards. Um, I don't want to say what country they're in because I don't remember but they're in Europe this is another European company they're in Sweden um, but what I was saying is Klim sends their keyboards you know they design send them off to get made in China and then deliver them they're good keyboards they, they, they're functional they get the job done and with a little bit of modding they sound excellent um, I mean it sounds so good the one that I modded it uh the vice president of product development reached out to me by email. We've um, maintained communication since. So um, I, uh, I just, all right, to not ramble on, the functionality of this keyboard isn't for me. It does. It's just, I, I, I don't get it. I don't. I just, I mean. Usually legends follow a theme. I mean, this not even have an enter. Like, come on. But you're either going to use symbols or you're going to use text. But the, this, what is that? That's, is that a bird flying? I, I don't know. I don't know. And this whole program everything about a keyboard, nah, this needs software. And I mean, it, it really, it would take a programmer... If the MCU is capable, which it should be, because it has, it has, it should have enough RAM. Now, if the MCU is compatible, it should take a programmer no more than a week, and that's being generous to write the um, the few files. I mean, it's you're literally just writing out the matrix, turning on what functionality it has on or off, and you know if you want to add, it's literally like one or two lines to like add caps lock to change colors because this just blinks so i don't know if i'm a caps lock or not i have to look all the way over here why can't i just use the and then i got all right i gotta just stop hitting keys all willy-nilly when it's pro when it's plugged into the the computer recording the feed or the video so um 
I I really wanted to like it because I do I've always enjoyed uh, having a shroud because you can you know change the look really easy plus if you're adventurous you can take this and paint it and give it you know some some styles panache it changed the keys out but I'd have to basically just you know rewrite the instructions to use the actual keys but even then I can't even program it the way I'd like to have it so that I could use it and it would fall into my workflow of things again I know they're a gamer company I mean this whole section over here is just mouse movements and then well, of course, you've got your arrow keys. So instead of WASD, all of these are controlled to your mouse movements, which, I mean, I know some people use that. But again, I think that's more gamer-centric. Now, I, I'm i not a gamer gamer. I play some games, but, I mean, the most intense game I play is No Man's Sky. So I'm not playing any high FPS games or anything like that. Um, but... I still think that, you know, companies, you know, they want to get into mechanical keyboards, but, you know, they want to have one foot in gamer and one foot in, just find what works for everybody. Because I know there's a lot of middle ground. There are a lot of keyboards that both gamers and enthusiasts like alike. One of the most important things, though, is software. And like I said, if you have the MCU for it, you could hire a developer to make the... Uh, make a QMK firmware so people could use it like this if they want or they could just map it on their own and set it up the way they are used to using the keyboard because as long as I was in IT I can't tell you how many people even when you know mechanical keyboards weren't necessarily a thing and I think most of them were just membranes or you know knockoffs of the 5150 a lot of people use their keyboards differently um, Windows shortcuts back then it wasn't necessarily mapping different keys but and nowadays it's even even more so people like to customize their keyboards there's ways that people use their keyboards that I I could never use but it works for them like there's ways that I use the keyboard that other people are like what because everyone has a different way of using you know certain tools that's why giving as much um, customization and flexibility I think is key and I don't think you're going to hear either gamers or enthusiasts complain but this just seems to it's trying to hit two targets and it misses them both that's just my feeling because even as a gamer I'm trying to think would I be happy with some of these things and no I wouldn't because especially like the the, the coloring it's like wait a minute I can turn on all lights but a few you won't let me set the color and then this finger effect I guess you just can't get rid of it and it just does certain keys I, I i don't i don't get what that is i really don't that one changes colors and those three go off it makes absolute no sense to me so i don't know i i don't don't want to sit here and uh be too awfully negative but i gotta be honest let's get technical Today we are reviewing the ExtraFi K5 RGB Compact. It is a wired 65% that includes a clip-on shroud. This keyboard does not have software for programmability. It must be done using the keyboard alone. They do include thick ABS shine-through keycaps with a width of 1.2 millimeter. They are five pin compatible with north-facing LEDs. Surprisingly, it also includes PCB mounted stabilizers, although they are extremely overly lubricated. It has five slots to program macros, but it does not have key remapping. It does include a steel plate, and this keyboard manufacturer retails starting at $129.99. Their, their website, though, offers many choices of switches and keycaps which can quickly increase the price. The weight of this keyboard is 634 grams without the shroud at 687 grams width. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters off the typing surface while the back sits at 27 millimeters providing for a six degree typing angle. 
Using the included pair of feet, it raises the back up to 34 millimeters, providing for a 10 degree typing angle. All right, so today we took a look at the extra feet K5 RGB, uh, compact 65%. Um, as much as I want to like this keyboard, because I do kind of, I, I like this layout. I like that it has the removable shroud, but I like that it has screw in stabilizers. Um, but that it, that's probably where it ends. Uh, I don't like that it doesn't have software. I don't like the way that it's supposed to be used to program the lights because they don't seem to work the way the manual states. I don't like the fact that the manual uh, lists the front legend keys instead of the actual keys because if you switch to a different key gap set, well, that's all gone downhill. Um, I don't like how flimsy the uh, frame is. I don't like the fact that the badge can sit on here crooked. Um, there's, and uh, I mean, I, I don't like that they chose a steel plate instead of taking the opportunity to, you know, do something different that they actually did screw in stabilizers. How about aluminum plate or even a PC plate? Um, I, again, I think the gamers and enthusiasts both both would agree with me on a lot of these points. Um, I mean, you put insert under the left bracket, which I need insert under delete. I can't have it any other place. I can't work any other way, and there's no way for me to do it. But you took the tab function and made that open calculator. Um, and you got a whole set of nine keys over here. I understand gamers like the mouse control, but and users should be able to decide what features they want to use and what features they don't want to use. I don't know. Like I said, I wanted to like this keyboard. I like this layout, but without having, without being able to reprogram the key keys, I just don't know. It, it would be nice if they actually, if they provided QMK, that would fix a lot of the issues right there. Then I could actually say, okay, let me, I mean, I probably will come back to this keyboard and mod it to see if it sounds good, but I can't use it. If I can't map, you know, insert to a known key and something that I can access quickly, I, I can't work on it. It's as simple as that. And I've got to believe there's games out there that uses the insert for one function or another, and people are going to be used to putting it, to using it right there. So... Uh, I I'm trying to be as fair as I can, trying to think of things I like about it to be, you know, fair, but I, I just, I can't, um, so, anyway, I, I think I've beat up on it <laughs> enough for now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the, this keyboard, and, um, I, I don't think it's gonna be anything impressive, but, like I said, I, I'll, I will put it on the queue, uh, for some day to come back to it, and, uh, modify it, and, who knows, maybe Exerfire will take, you know, my commentary and maybe they'll get grab one of their developers and have them sit down and write a QMK port for this because that immediately would turn this into a keyboard I could use. Well, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.